So welcome everybody who's here on the webinar and welcome Dr. Mike, nice to have you here. Thank you so much. I, uh, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to sharing a few different thoughts and insights with everybody. It's, uh, it's 8 a.m. here for those, for those who are on BC time, it's 8 a.m. here. So I'm just, I'm just getting into my, my coffee. It's just starting to lighten up here even actually. When I, when I first got up, I noticed when I was setting up, I noticed how dark it still is uh, even at this time here. So you're ahead of the curve there on the East Coast. No, it's nice and bright, beautiful, sunny day today. Probably very cold. I haven't been outside yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably a good idea. Well, great, uh, great to have everybody here. And should I just, are we waiting for people still or should we just start? You know what, let's get started. I will um, admit people as they join. A few people will join late, but yeah, we've got a good group already. So let's get started. Okay. So back to the winter is coming uh, edition. And of course, at this point, winter is now here for everybody. Uh, before I got going, I, I wanted to just give you a little bit more of an idea who I am. I don't want to waste too much time on this, but just so you know who is who you're having a chat with today. Uh, my name is Michael Woodworth, although I go by Mike as well. I'm a professor at the University of British Columbia. They have two campuses now, or two main campuses, one up in the Okanagan, and that's been since 2004, and one down, of course, in Vancouver. I've been up at the Okanagan campus uh, since it opened in 2004, and I'm also a registered psychologist here in the community. So uh, roughly a day a week, I see patients. Uh, right now, a little bit more than one day a week, just because uh, a number of people are, are, are hoping to be seen. Uh, I specialize in more psychology and law type issues and teach courses in that area. I just finished up a course with 355 students, a third year course on psych and law. But I do a lot of clinical work as well, uh, considering issues around well-being and in some cases performance and as it pertains to different workplaces. Uh, that's about all I can think of. If anyone has any questions about my background, feel free. I wonder if I can see the comments though too somehow. That's the only thing. Well, we'll have to see when we get there that part. So winter is here and I'm gonna do everything in my power to give you all a bunch of different strategies, help you knock it out of the park uh, for the next few months in terms of not only your well-being but also your work performance. And I say this every time, but I think it's really important for people to keep in mind that creative self-care strategies will directly impact your work and if you are really feel like you're firing on all cylinders in terms of your self-care and well-being, this can't help but have an absolutely amazing impact on your work performance as well. So it's really not one or the other. They're like a package deal. And by the way, I said 18, but I always want to go the extra mile for everybody. So of course, I've, I've, I've still got the 20. And just a little hot tip. I forgot to mention this last time. We will want to be doing, uh, we will be doing a version of who wants to be a realtor extraordinaire at the end of this presentation. So for those that are paying particular attention, uh, there will be bragging rights. And so please be keep paying attention to see if you can also perhaps get all the questions right at the end of this presentation as well. So we'll start off, and I always like to start with the self-care strategies, and I call this from accepting your evolutionary self to watermelon. That'll make more sense in a moment. And let's face it, there's no, there's no two ways around it. Uh, this time of year, uh, I'm fairly certain I've heard back east as well, we start to get much worse weather. And that combined with the pandemic is, is certainly far from what some people are saying. It's incredibly complicated. Uh, Things are more time consuming. Everything seems to have additional steps, additional stressors, additional considerations. And this can all lead to people having issues around not only self-confidence, but self-esteem in ways that they never would have anticipated before. Um, this is one thing I thought I would open up for discussion. What are people finding particularly difficult to navigate right now? The only, the only caveat we have here is that I can't see the, the comments. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to. I'll definitely share any comments that come in and I'll type in your questions in the comment uh, section as well, just in case people want to chat with me that way. Okay, great. Because yeah, there's a few coming up where 
I don't know where where the comment thing went though. I should be able to see that. Um, so what are people finding particularly hard to navigate right now during the, the pandemic? Anything in particular? I just typed in the question. Let's see if we get any responses. I'm also While we're waiting there, I'm gonna to look to see if I can find my turn comment function on. I don't <laughs> So there should be a little chat box down at the bottom for you to take a look at. But I just typed in, what do you guys find the most stressful right now and most difficult to navigate? Yeah, I'm not seeing it on mine. Yeah, so we're getting a comment coming in here. So not knowing what will happen next. And yes. sitting at okay, home. Okay, and here we go. I've, I've got it right now. Um, <laughs> sitting at home, I see that as well now from, from Umesh and not knowing what's going to happen next. And I'm going to try and cover both of those things in this, this talk in terms of the uncertainties and, and how you can maybe try and handle that a bit better. Uh, because um, let's face it, human beings do not like feeling uncertain for long periods of time and also the amount of time sitting at home. And actually, I've got a couple, I think, really good uh, strategies to help out with that or things that could at least be beneficial. Okay, so let's continue on. I think a lot of days some of us are feeling like this. I know for me, I still find it even just going to get basic groceries at the grocery store and trying to figure out in terms of distance, in terms of you know, beside people, behind people, exactly what the protocol is. And I think everybody, one of the problems is everybody has a completely different idea about what that should look like. Uh, one thing I can say is here comes the evolutionary part. We, we are hardwired in times of uncertainty, uncertainty and stress to go into this mode called fight or flight. It's actually very healthy and it's meant to be able to help us prevent uh, extreme danger. The problem is, the real kicker here is no human being is wired to go into that mode and that hypervigilant sort of disposition for months on end. And so that is really one of the big challenges right now. Something that is meant to be healthy for us is, is causing major damage in terms of it being, or it can cause because of how long and chronic this has been going on for. A recent stat showed that about 25%, and I'm gonna say it's probably higher than that at this point, feel way less resilient now than they did perhaps a few months ago. And I'm gonna say this number is a bit higher now too, because these stats are a few weeks old. Um, nearly half are tired of following all the protocols. So except though that at, at, at its essence, this is a, a healthy thing to feel, it's just, way too much of it. Okay, one thing that you can work on is that, except that some of this is not only normal, but what you can or can't control. And so some of those uncertainties, when you're feeling really anxious and uncertain, if you try and actually lay out maybe some things that you still can control in terms of your behavior and environment, compared to things that you can't, and try and really separate those things. And so you still can control how you're treating others and, and what but certain other aspects, like when everybody's going to get a vaccine or if a vaccine, you can't control. The more that some of those things, you can just accept them, uh, can be helpful. Also, give yourself a lot more self-compassion and really, really go easy on yourself and others. If there was ever a time, and I, I named this guy, I kind of come to think of him. It's not his actual name, but uh, I found him on the web. I've called him the Chief Kindness Officer. Uh, it doesn't look, shoot, it doesn't look like the, the gifts are working, but hopefully that's just for, for this slide. Hello, Makesh. I see we have another person entering. Um, one thing you can try, and actually it's funny, I was talking to the head of uh, talent and culture yesterday, Bell, and she observed that this, this new date, at least in BC, for those of you who aren't in BC, we now have to stay in our, our conceptual bubbles, as it were, until January 8th and uh, January 8th is also for everyone across the country is actually national bubble bath day. So if you, if you don't learn anything else today, uh, for those you've attended, probably a lot of you didn't know January 8th, I'm not kidding, it's national bubble bath day. And so I thought, well, ironically, also we're trying to stay in our core bubbles. I kind of made up this mantra, bubble stays in his core bubble till bubble bath day. Uh, that's something you could maybe try and say a bunch of times fast, uh, perhaps five, and, and have as a mantra. Uh, does everyone know who Bubbles is, by the way? Yes? I do, yeah. 
From, from Trailer Park Boys. So, I mean, look at Bubbles and his cat there. It looks like they're imploring people to just soldier through and make it make it till uh, brighter days. And maybe if this mantra isn't quite doing it for you, uh, you could have some sort of other mantra that you have or some other thing in your mind when you're feeling particularly frazzled that you can repeat and just have a little bit of a reset. Um, although I like this one. Okay, and so don't take it personally. Everybody's nerves are thin. And this is something as realtors that you're gonna to have to be in some ways experiencing perhaps more than most in terms of having an occupation that already people can be fairly anxious. It can be one of the biggest decisions of their lives. And you've got all these things that you would know about even outside of the current environment. And now you've got to, got to consider that that's gonna be, people are gonna be even a little bit more anxious and stressed. So I like to think of it as that everybody is about 30% less fresh. But hey, speaking of confidence, I think you really should keep in mind that for many of you, you're ahead of the curve in terms of some of these aspects that other human beings are finding difficult in terms of whatever their occupation is or their challenges around time management, independence, having to work irregular hours, these are skills that are arguably fairly fundamental for many people in the real estate uh, industry. And so you can think about it that you're having to supersize these previous skills, but at least you have some of these, or at least you've been working on some of these skills already, kind of put you ahead of the game for some of the challenges that we're having right now. Did I miss another one of our coming up? Every day it seems like I'm seeing another article. Um, Hi, Suki, who I saw is just joining now. Doom scrolling. The amount of time people are choosing to try and cope by just going on their screens. And while up to a certain amount of this is healthy, uh, we're seeing time and time again that after a certain amount, it is more than diminishing returns. Uh, it's, people are finding it very difficult to disconnect from their screens. And I know this, this is outdated, but you start adding up the amount of minutes per day TikTok, I think, is the big one that's not on there. And my wife recently, finally, now I, I'd stayed away from TikTok, but now she managed to to woo me in. And I have to admit, you, it is like a sand dial. Of course, some things are very, very, you know, can be very nice to see in terms of. Uh, last time I was saying my mother was thinking of adopting a dog. I'm, I'm happy to say the dog there on the the bottom side on the left, the little one, she did adopt, that's little Parker. So spending a little time looking at pictures of Parker can't, can't hurt anybody, but after a certain amount of time, it really can become uh, potentially, you know, it can really up your stress levels if you're spending too much time online. So I thought this is another discussion point. What are some ways that people are using, some clever ways they're using to try and either reduce or manage their, their screen time? on either the, their laptops or their, their phones. I've got the chat. Exercise, excellent Zolo team. Uh, deciding to, to switch it off and, and go, go do some exercise is fantastic. I'll talk a little bit more about exercise uh, in a moment. And, and by the way, Jane, you'll, you'll see it coming up here shortly. You're, you're actually also increasing your lifespan with, with that off. What are some other options though, specific to the, the phone? Because it's one thing in theory to think, oh, instead of looking at the phone, I'll exercise. But what are some other ways that you can maybe help give yourself a bit of a, a better chance of, of disconnecting? What ways am I reducing my stress? No, sorry, I'm just typing it into the chat box so people can reply that way. Or if you guys wanna turn on your mic and, and let us know how you're reducing stress. You can do or that. just how they're how they're reducing their screen time actually what or what strategies time. they have for disconnecting from their phones umesh great so switching over to try and do some meditation and we'll talk about that in a minute as well anyone have a clever one maybe we get a i'll give a point here in terms of uh yoga and meditation yeah that's great anyone have one specific for disconnecting from their phone that they like to use Game show point on the line here. <laughs> Switch to TV. Yes, 
That, it's good. You can definitely mix it up with some some TV as well. Read. Okay. So all right. We'll we'll go with that. Uh, Z Danka said with read, and we'll say okay. Actually, putting down the phone to read. Uh, some that you know, I don't know about some of the people out there, but in terms of self control, it can be very very difficult. Uh, setting some sort of alarm on your phone or setting a maximum amount of time on your phone per day. That can be two good ones. Uh, another one that I read about recently is maybe to commit that for at least two of the three meals per day, you are going to not have your phone on you. So you're gonna eat without having your phone nearby. You know, Creating these little pockets where you, you are not connected into your phone um, or committing that you won't be looking at any news items during that time as well. Hey, I see a bunch of awesome ideas coming in. Uh, switch over and play chess. Try different recipes, baking home chores. Look at that, Ranjit, you, uh, you're ahead of the game. I've got that in our next session on uh, how to stay connected. Paint, art therapy, whoa, I can't even keep up. Hey, this is awesome, everybody. Doing some art therapy and painting, some creative activity like that, or baking, excellent. Listening and watching the GM team YouTube training sessions. There you go, boom. And also exploring cooking. Yes, the, they have found that not only in terms of a singular activity, but for this idea of being home alone. And I think many people are really zoomed out of too many Zooms, but can be very fun to sort of combine, you know, your own actual space and the virtual space. You have the same type of food items delivered to not only your place, but a couple of friends' houses as well, or uh, condos or family as well. And you do some sort of cook off or cooking competition at the same time, right? Where you try and actually find clever ways to combine these two different avenues and can also help with some loneliness from the amount of time that people are spending at home. Wow, that's, that's fantastic amount of different ideas there. Look, here's a gift for everybody. I just found this yesterday. If you have to work uh, on your own in your space at home for any given period of time, which is, I think, well, maybe not the vast majority of us, but a good chunk of us, here's a link to something called Sound of Colleagues. And that, that screen will come up on your screen. You can actually choose to what level you want all of these different sort of background noise sounds to be on as if you're not just alone or having it be too quiet. I, of course, love to blare music, but I have to admit, I tried out this Sound of Colleagues yesterday and I jacked up, well, funny enough, I really like putting uh, rain on window at high. And then of course, people, the office dog up to too high is a little bit weird, I found over time. But I actually forgot I had it on. I was home all alone working on this talk and a couple of other things. And I didn't realize I had it on for about an hour uh, and it, it really is actually quite nice. It's brilliant. I think some people in Sweden developed it. So I strongly encourage everyone, check out this Sound of Colleagues. I know there's at least a few people out there that in terms of the amount of time they're having to spend uh, in their own space and often alone, uh, it's a bit too much. And while I could listen to music forever, uh, something like this is actually fun to mix it up. Here's another one. Unfortunately, these things are pretty pricey. If you know somebody that you've just found out or realized you're going to have to be um, disconnected from for a very long period of time, way longer than you hoped to be, and you know maybe shop around on the net and you can find a cheaper version. There's these really cool lights and there's actually a different one that's wooden with little color bits in it as well. Whenever you press down on it and you can pick different color schemes and all sorts of funky stuff, uh, the other person that also has one anywhere in the world theirs will light up as well. And so it's a really cool way and a unique way to let someone else know in terms of a connection that you're thinking about them and that you know they're out there and that you, at any given time of the day, maybe don't do it too late. <laughs> maybe check the time differences so you're not, but there's another idea in terms of a different connection. I scoured the web to look for some different uh, cool ideas and, and, and this, this one, despite the price, unfortunately. I mean, I think it's reasonable to, considering what you get, but it is a, it is a lot of money. They're like a 120 bucks each. Um, okay. In terms of your space again, and uh, having to spend too much time and somebody brought that up at the beginning, 
in terms of being proactive and really batten down the hatches in your, your home space, even something as basic as a little bit more greenery, a nice plant on your desk, get some other stuff going in your space, even a small amount of money being proactive on those type of things can make a huge difference. Green, by the way, is actually thought by psychologists to be the most positive color. And studies have shown, I don't know how they get these numbers of 15%, but in terms of both positivity and productivity, literally just having a plant or two on your desk can increase that by about 15%. So go out, spend, you know, like eight bucks on a plant at the, at the grocery market. And hey, I've just got you 15% more in terms of your mood and your productivity. I wish you could find that particular plant at the grocery store because I'd buy like four of those and put them you know, on each corner of the desk and uh, then who knows what could happen in terms of, of creativity. Okay, one of the huge ones, and someone brought this up, it's very difficult right now uh, in terms of worry and all sorts of strategies out there. But one I can say is that you set aside a little bit of time to maybe try and write down a few of those worries in advance and it can often make them feel a little less worse or give you a bit more perspective. Study after study has shown that students that do this before writing a big test, if they sit down for about five or 10 minutes and do a worry journal, they perform significantly better on the test. Or you take one big fear that you currently have and you just think of one aspect that perhaps you can work on on that. I talked about box breathing before too, where you just uh, do breathing in for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, release for four seconds, and then wait four seconds before you take another breath. Uh, if you didn't like my bubbles mantra, this is something else you can do at certain times of the day to try and do a reset. What other, I call them ruminator slayers. What are some other ideas from the, from everyone who's out there participating right now? Anybody got some cool ideas for how they deal with uh, their worries that helps them to reduce it when they're starting to worry too much. We had such great suggestions before. And of course, some of these ideas that people have put up around what they would do in terms of art and, and trying these things, they would help for worry as well. But does anyone else have any other ideas? From being worried there, Urkel being worried to getting off or accepted. Oh, great. Just doing some, some movement and dance. That's a fantastic idea. Don't watch the news. There you go. Thank you, uh, Jane. Don't watch too much news at the very least. I kind of have to for my, for my work as a psychologist. I need to be up to date on the news to best sort of speak with my, my patients. But uh, definitely, even I set a timer. Uh, it, it should be a very small amount. And then, and then switch to something else. So actually, both of those play in very nicely to something else I do as well. Uh, distractions and someone who's very big on creativity and and filmmaking and uh, some of you may have heard of this master class there some of them are fantastic if you're wanting a distractor if you're feeling particularly worried and you're you're not having the ability at the moment to kind of pivot somewhere else a great distractor go to something that's really inspiring for you and something that might really get your mind thinking a different way. Masterclass is great. Uh, they have all sorts of different experts, pros, inspiring people on there. I believe they have some chefs, filmmakers, uh, authors, uh, people involved in different sports. So here's something else. You wanna reduce your worry, just completely push it to the side, go on to something like Masterclass, order up a couple of really inspiring. They're short, short and sweet and get inspired. Uh, for me, I chose a one by David Lynch, and I'm thinking of doing another one of them, maybe even later today. Hey, here you go, yoga. And the great thing about yoga is outside of all the really beneficial things we already know about it, it's been found to also create something called divergent thinking, which is essentially uh, a way that you generate, a person generates a bunch of different solutions to a problem. And so if you want to feel like you're having a better ability to be really creative and, and think through a problem, it, it turns out that this Hatha Yoga is one way you can do that. And having that type of divergent thinking is also 
suggests that a person is really high on adaptability and being able to adapt to different situations. And of course, right now, there's never been a time where having that skill set uh, comes into play more than right now. If you're high on adapt adaptability, you're doing fantastic. So there you go. That doesn't look too difficult. If it's going to help me be able to uh, use divergent thinking. And here you go, hot off the press, because I'm always looking for everyone to um, get the most premium information. This is from December 6th. New research suggests that you may only need, and now we're down to 11 minutes. If you can even do 11 minutes of exercise each day, okay, we're talking 660 seconds, that's it, uh, you will live longer. How they determine that, you'd have to go right to the journal article to see, but this caught my attention a couple of days ago. That's all you need, everybody, 11 minutes. And I know this one's particularly difficult for uh, realtors to just unplug and actually put down their phone and not to be thinking about their work. It can be really challenging, but again, any opportunity you have to sort of get off the grid, head out into nature, even for half an hour, if there's somewhere you can drive to go for a short walk. I know this time of year, especially in certain parts of the country, this is a particularly big ask, but speaking of that 11 minutes, even 10 minutes outside trying to clear your mind. Uh, can make a huge difference. I don't know about this place. I can't, I can't decide if that place looks like kind of a scary place I wouldn't want to visit or like a really cool funky pad out, out in the forest. Um, you can also think of maybe going off and doing something like that where you stay overnight out in nature as a hook. And I'm, I'm trying to think of and I'm trying to work with my clients on different hooks from, you know, once things settle down and whenever we kind of get the idea that they have, what are some things that you have as a hook to get you through and that you're keeping reminding yourself or using as incentive for down the line when you feel like you've hit some spot where you're able to, um, you know, things open up a bit and you want to reward yourself for, for you know, really rocking it and getting through these months. I personally, one thing I'm doing right now, uh, current book I'm reading, I have, you can see there's some pesos in there making me think of the next time I can go on a nice, to a nice sunspot. I've got that every time now that I read a book, this reminds me and I think about sort of a nice sandy beach and, and when I can hopefully in the future get there. So just some sort of little reminders or things, hooks, you know, you're trying to hook into the future. What are some ideas from everybody out there? What kind of hooks are people using or can they think of that would be really appealing for them to use hopefully a couple months from now sort of idea? Any ideas? Anything you've got helpful to sort of inspire the rest of the people participating right now? I think everyone's probably like, "Oh, I'll take the I'll take the peso one and and, and uh, head to Mexico." I like that idea. <laughs> yes. And there's my there's. I'm hoping that's going to be my view from. Uh, a space somewhere at some point in the future. And last but not least in terms of self-care, I've talked at length before about music and how much music can be beneficial for a person on so many levels. And I've also talked about sleep at length before. And by the way, in the next few weeks, look for, um, I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna roll it out, but I've been collecting a bunch of different websites and resources to help with things like that for different ways to help with your sleep and different resources for really inspiring music. Uh, so look for that to come out in the nearish future as well uh, for anyone who's with Zolo to, to help them out. But food, another big one. In the past, I've talked about all sorts of food that helps with intelligence and cognitive abilities, avocados being one of the big ones. But hey, for you all today, watermelon, that's not only great for you, but it's also thought to be an aphrodisiac. Uh, it relaxes blood vessels. And it's supposed to have all sorts of uh, beneficial properties. Okay, so on to the second half. And let's see how we're doing with time. I think we're doing okay, actually. Innovative work performance techniques. Uh, I call this section the from innovation. And I did call it from innovation to carrot. But I have actually switched it up, the presentation. So now it's delicious sandwiches. The, the carrot fellow doesn't make as much sense anymore. But I, I couldn't let him go. I couldn't let him go. I had to keep him in here. 
Okay, what an opportunity for everybody that is in the real estate industry right now. This, this idea of who, what, where, when, why, uh, that comes to some of the things that people think about when they consider moving, where they're gonna move, uh, what type of place they wanna move into, what type of place is gonna meet their needs, as this pandemic has gone on, more and more individuals have been thinking about, does the space they're in meet their needs? Is it a good fit? Is, it, is there a better fit? And I think that this is a real opportunity for people in real estate to have, not that they don't already have a major impact on a person's life, but right now, in terms of the opportunity to be working with people over some, some you know, you can have a real fundamental impact and also, I think for those people that are being particularly clever and creative in how they're trying to connect with people right now, this can be a huge benefit in terms of generating leads and sales. And so does anyone have any ideas of how they're during the pandemic being particularly innovative that they can share with everyone and that, that has really been working for them in terms of trying something a little bit different or thinking outside the box? This one, okay, when we get to the game show, if someone puts a particularly good idea or, or, or just puts themselves out there and puts an idea uh, and let me know if one comes in for you too, Jane, this, this will officially be a point for that person for the game show coming up. So you'll have a lead. You can, you can, you can breathe easy. You'll already be up one point in the final game show. Uh, if something, some idea. There we go, Jane scooped it, virtual consultations. So adapting over and figuring out ways that they can use some sort of uh, virtual context to do consultations. Awesome. Other ideas from people? Start playing poker in home. Okay, Jamil, do you mean playing poker where you are, are, are inviting people from the, the, the community that you might wanna be connecting with? Uh, okay, and and virtual poker, or you're still doing some sort of social distance poker? I suppose you could, like in your garage with the thing up, have a, a bunch of people. Getting time with your dog. Yes, I have my dog. He's he's right over here, Cookie. He's in his anxiety bed, watching me present. Actually, um, if you kind of maybe connect with other people who also right now, uh, I know this from my forensic work. Sadly. Puppies has been the number one fraud or scam on the internet since March, and it continues to be. So many people are really connecting with their pets. And if you can figure out a way to do that to connect with potential clients, uh, that's actually a great idea. Uh, I was thinking about, yes, pets are absolutely the best and they've, they've never been better than they, they currently are. Um, you often hear about, you know, one thing realtors can do is sort of help people with the area that they're living in and different types of resources and restaurants. And of course, right now, those things are really compromised. Uh, you could have some sort of uh, online social media presence where you are advising clients or people that you're trying to connect with about places that are still doing takeout and then update it every week to show if there's different places or be sort of looking into if there's different innovative ways people can have meals delivered or takeout. And if you have something dynamic like that, where you're actually going to get people returning to look repeatedly to see if it's been updated. And if it's actually useful and something unique to some of the stresses people are having right now, and you're getting them repeatedly eyeing you and the, and the space you've created, I think this can really be uh, an excellent idea. Of course, anything that helps you connect in with the community is going to pay out big time right now and giving back to the community. And as I'll talk about in a minute, there's all sorts of benefits from that as well. So that's great. That's some great ideas as well in terms of innovation. And of course, and I apologize for on his face, you just don't look at his shirt. Don't look what it says. I, I don't wanna have uh, bad language in here, but I think people are feeling like their homes is one place where they have a, a refuge and they can get away from all this in the pandemic. You kind of feel like that, that you're able to like keep it away but, but stress levels are, there's no question, incredibly high. And so speaking of stress, here's a couple of fairly recent stats. Uh, home buyer twice as likely to feel anxiety. 
Uh, and while in the past people may be largely motivated by financial gain, as of now, people are needing to move for a variety of reasons. Some of them have just realized that they, they need a better space and the space they're in isn't a good fit. Others, unfortunately, it's health concerns, it's money concerns, it's stress around relationships, uh, a whole variety of reasons. And around three quarters of individuals admitted that, and of course this is gonna be even in normal times, times of strife when you're having the home buying process, but uh, particularly now, there has never been a time, and I've said this for years, but now it is, could never be more relevant. There's never been a time that you and I share the exact same occupation. Uh, any skills that a clinical psychologist would have, you are going to benefit by working on and honing those skills. Okay? And so one thing you can think of is emotional intelligence, really tapping into your own feelings, which can be helpful right now, as well as the feelings of a person. Uh, this, even in your life outside of anything to do with the occupation can impact relationships and decisions. But how that might have your client feel like you're being genuine with them and that you are, you are really being empathetic with them. Uh, this right now, arguably, if you have high emotional intelligence, I would predict your ability to be a highly successful realtor right now is through the roof. You, you, can't, you can't put a number on how how much time have you put into this thinking about your clients and working with them can make a difference. So what are some, some funky ideas or some cool ideas people have out there that are participating about how they're uh, in really in particular right now showing uh, potential clients or clients that they care or ways that then when they're interacting with clients that they're showing them that they care. What are some ideas that people have? Anyone? So Jane already has a point. If someone else uh, shows some other strategy that they use for really strutting their empathy and their emotional intelligence with their work. There you go. All right. Saeed's got a, a point on the board as well. All right. Now we're hopping. Now things are getting dramatic. Uh, supporting elderly clients and, you know, in a variety of ways that they could use some support. And of course, they're even more particularly prone to being lonely right now so that's that's a great idea anyone else i'll give out one more point here and then we can maybe have have three people on the board i'll wait a second more get it while you can other creative strategy this is helpful for everybody you'll be helping out your fellow uh people with zolo okay well for a client that's particularly anxious or angry there's something called a pattern interrupt. Uh, when they're venting with you or they're perhaps not particularly happy about something about an offer or a counter offer or, or things that you know they didn't get a particular place that they were hoping to get. Um, one thing you can do, let them vent or talk to you for about, uh, it says 20 to 30 seconds. I always err on 20 seconds with my, my patients. And then as a type of what reset or redirect, uh, just stop them for a second and say, hey, I, I I just give me a second. I want to take a few notes on my phone. I want to be able to really take down your main points. Do something that actually forces them to pause for a moment. And often that can be enough to interrupt them and get them to defuse just a little bit. And also shows them that you care and you're thinking about what they're saying. So that's one strategy. And another one, see if you can't communicate double. Whatever you're right now communicating with your clients, make it a goal to see if you can't communicate double. So in terms of the amount of questions that you're asking, uh, really letting them know that their voice is being heard. Right now, things around their family, their jobs, see if you can't be talking about their hobbies and interests, future ambitions, right now, of course, concerns. Perhaps make it a goal that you find out three other things about your client that you didn't already know. It's, just, it's amazing how often one of those three things can then lead to something that is very helpful for the transaction as well. Please keep in mind, nonverbal is about 90%, um, either nonverbal or tone, about 90% of the emotional connection. And a smile, and of course, all of you are thinking, well, right now with, with masks, that's awfully difficult. 
the idea of a Duchesne smile. And when you're feeling a real genuine smile and happiness and positivity, a person can really see that through the smile. Uh, how can you convey that right now? Any ideas? And again, let's say then we can have three people on the board. How are you conveying through your body language to your clients in terms of this openness and genuineness and empathy? What kind of things can you be thinking about or doing? I've got one idea, but let's see if someone else can get one as well. Come on, easy point. One way that you can show through your nonverbal. Okay, smiling always, always trying to remember to smile. What do you do though? And okay, we'll give you a point for that. So now we've got three people on the board, but what do you do right now when you've got that, when you have to in many situations wear that mask that covers up the bottom of your face? Arguably smiling still, a person can still get a better idea. What else is something you can do in terms of how you're acting or conveying that warmth to a client? Any other ideas? Smile with your eyes, great. Really practice on that. And actually you do see with a, a real genuine Duchesne smile, it should be apparent on the eyes as well. Despite those efforts, I think you will find it still can be very difficult. I think people now are in the habit that even if they're in a context and say they're inside a place with someone where they have to be wearing a mask, even when they come out of that place, and like they're saying their goodbyes, get in your car. It's almost become habitual for some people to keep a mask on. Uh, if you can remember to, if you have an opportunity in an appropriate socially distant space to take off your mask and use your full face and with a really open sort of body language, then uh, please do remember. So if you have that opportunity when you're saying a final goodbye to someone or a potential client, or you're talking about a potential, uh, deal if you do have an opportunity to take off the mask you really should if you feel comfortable and it's an appropriate space um, because it, it really can be helpful hey that's a great suggestion from saeed acknowledge their frustration and listen carefully uh, that's right so communicate double but at also times really just be there and have them feel like they can listen it's it's uncanny to me in terms of some of the stressors people would be having right now around real estate, how much our jobs would be similar. And some of the same training a clinical psychologist would get uh, would be the exact same tra training that someone in the real estate agency would get. So this GIF isn't working, which makes it little, a little bit weird. But another thing you can do to put your clients at ease and give them confidence, not only in you, but to feel good about the situation is always be keeping up to date on whatever the current information is around the market and around that particular area. Each day you should be maybe seeing if you can't find out some piece of information. For example, right now, some people, and I even have this with some of my patients, uh, at a certain age range, in a younger age range, in their, say, uh, early 20s to late 20s, they're, they're finding that they are having to move back in home or change up their living situation, and they're feeling a little bit potentially anxious about that. Uh, at least a certain portion of the population, this is happening right now. And by the way, Zolo is great. Uh, the Zolo home-based blog, there's a variety of different resources I've noticed, and I was looking at just yesterday, that are right there at your fingertips to be able to get all sorts of really current information. You should have that immediately to be able to convey to clients. And that'll just increase their confidence, help, you know, if you can have one fear that they've had where you help them out by some information you had, that's fantastic right there. Another way you connect is this idea of weak ties, in terms of different people that you can maybe making connections with. Uh, upsize it by getting involved in some community project or involvement. And the great news is creating these kind of human connections, especially if they're ones where you're giving, this can improve your immune system and also make you more resilient as well. There we go. Oh, there we go. I don't know. I'm not sure, Jane, has this been pausing at times to the gifts or have they been playing? They've been playing, yeah, but just the last one didn't, but yeah, most of them have. Now it is, and now you can see there's a lot going on in the, that, that picture. <laughs> yeah. Okay, in terms of time here, I want to make sure we have time for the game show. A couple more big ones to go. Number 19, wow, we've, 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 we've made it through a ton. Uh, once a person gets distracted, you know, if you're really trying to focus in on something, 
it's roughly estimated it takes about 23 minutes to refocus back in. And so if you have an ability to find somewhere that you can really have to focus in, and I know this is a challenge for a lot of people working at home right now or spending an extra amount of time at home, uh, really setting up somewhere that you have the ability to focus in. However, too, too much time focused in can also be an issue as well, which I'll get to in a minute. But a couple of suggestions here in terms of that focus and trying to keep a positive mindset each night, some sort of victory, victory, you can call it your victory document. You can have a special, a special book, whatever you'd like that you write in, write down some of your accomplishments and positives from either the day or the week. It'll play into doing positive talk and motivation with your clients as well. And then each morning, perhaps three to five main goals for the day. And then perhaps think of a habit or a routine that can help you. What's a particular habit or routine that anyone that's participating right now uses that they want to share with everyone? Uh, put another free point on the board, just to really make it interesting when we do the questions. Three people each have a point at this moment. What's a particular habit or routine that someone out there uses that they find particularly useful to keep them on track and motivated. Any routine or habit that people use that, that they find particularly useful? Someone's got to have them. I know that they, maybe they want to, hey, there we go. Saeed and Saeed, I believe you already got a point, which means you are up to already, okay. Meditation, reading, and write my goals first thing in the morning. Well, hey, you're right on the money there. Uh, a point for you as well. I can't remember if you got a point. Be keeping track or, or Jane, maybe try and help me. I know you got a point too, Jane. Yeah, no um, right Excellent. Now. Both of them have two points. <laughs> two points. Oh, good. We're keeping track. Uh, meditation, reading, and write goals down first thing in the morning. Hey, what a, what a brilliant combination of three things to start the day off right Anyone else want to put something out there in terms of a routine or something that helps them in terms of habits or keeping keeping focused? A lot of different things going on there. Any other ideas? Last chance here. Easy point. Easy point. I've got one more coming up here for you. One more suggestion. Okay, there we go. I don't know if some of you remember this maybe from from a, a class you took or just from looking into these different ideas around focus and habits. Uh, there's this thing called the Pod Moro technique. And I don't think everyone gives this poor guy credit. Francesco Sorello talked about how if you have a large task that you have to do and sort of a monumental sale that you're trying to make or you're trying to instigate or trying to figure out how to work on it, try and take one chunk, just one chunk of that task and do it at a time, break it down into smaller chunks. And then the flip side of the Podmoro technique is they're now suggesting you work on that for a certain amount of time and then you also take a chunk as a break. And that funny enough, I read something recently that said about 20 minutes is the, the max a person can really be creative and focus in. I don't know about people out there, but that's just about when I start getting going. So depending on the study you read between 20 and 90 minutes is about the amount of time you have to really be effective and really batting it out of the part and thinking about something and working on it before you take some sort of between, they you know, recommend at least 10 minutes to half hour break. And if you chunk things up like this, even if it seems like less time overall that you're being productive, the quality of your productivity will go way up rather than the quantity. So this pod moral technique, people that really follow this technique say they've had all sorts of benefits and successes over time. Uh, and you can celebrate just like my happy little tomato there. Always be honing your negotiation skills. We'll end off with this one. Of course, that magical moment when an offer gets accepted. Uh, and I would say as a goal to people out there, try and be thinking of one clever negotiation skill per week to add to your repertoire. So last time I talked about as a counter offer, some sort of unusual number. So rather than whatever you would expect to be a typical number or just coming in with 999 or whatever it would be, think of a very unique particular number. This 
you know, even if the other person knows that you're using the strategy, it's uncanny, it seems to work where it feels like you put a particular amount of thought and time into your offer. And this makes it more difficult for the other person that you're negotiating with. And they feel like they wanna be respectful and study after study have shown that their counter offer will be higher than if you just used a standard sort of accepted number. Can anyone else just, just briefly here, anyone else think a quick chance to get another point before the actual game show? A clever negotiation strategy they use within their work that they are willing to share with everyone for a point that they work when they're working with their clients or working with another agent, a clever negotiation strategy that, that, that they use that they find can be beneficial. Someone willing to offer one up? It's tell them your experience. Okay, Kevin, you could be on the board. Um, can you explain a little bit more what that means? Do you mean just being really genuine and open in terms of your experience in what way? I like where this is heading though. Can you expand on that slide? Oh, here we go. Or if you know any trades, so I'm a licensed home inspector. So I tell my clients, ah, excellent. When you let them know in terms of particular skill sets or knowledge or abilities that you have in terms of their confidence and their stress levels and making sure that you, you lead with that or you, you pepper the conversation with it. That is a big cap locks. Yes, Kevin, that's awesome. So you also have a point now and I think that's a really important point to keep in mind. Wow, Saeed slipping in there to get three points. I tell you, respect the other agents at all time and show them that you're respecting them in a variety of ways. Uh, I'll take that as well. There you go. You can see as the presentation goes on, I, I have less self-control and I put more and more just silly cartoon gifts. Uh, I controlled myself for most of the slides, so you'll have to forgive me uh, for people participating. This is another strategy that I read about. The person, I liked it online. She called it the gratitude sandwich technique. Gratitude sandwich technique. Whenever you are starting up your side of the negotiation or renegotiating, she said she always tries to think and she doesn't try and make it so obvious and she tries to make it also genuine. You both start your part of the negotiation with some sort of gratitude or statement or positivity, speaking about respect for the other agent or something that really sets a tone around how thankful you are that they've been willing to come back to the table after whatever stresses might have happened. You start with that, then you do your sell, your ask, whatever it might be, and then you always end with another gratitude statement at the end. So you think of this gratitude sandwich, I think it can be really, really effective. And so that's I'm, I have the same goal now to be thinking of at least one new one a week. So that's my new one. And I'll get off this slide so you don't have to keep watching that. You know, that's, the, that's what I came up with for gratitude sandwich uh, in terms of, uh, but hey, I liked it. Okay, so we have just about five minutes left and we're gonna fly through. Who wants to be a realtor extraordinaire? Bragging rights, we got people already on the board. I'm super excited. Jane, can you maybe be keeping track of who answers first? Whoever answers first gets the point. I will, for sure. A person can type it in, or if they want to really be assertive, just yell it out right away. Some of these are going to go quick, I think, because you're going to, I know everyone's, um, yes, me, meaning you have points. Maybe, yeah, you are on the board. Two points, I think. Yeah, she's got two points. Three. Kevin has one. Jane has one. Am I missing someone? No, that's it. That's what I've got. Jamil? Is Jamil saying he has a point? I don't know. Okay. Not Here yet. we go. All right. Accept your evolutionary self. Fight or flight meant to be short term. What percent are feeling less resilient in the second wave? What percentage? Does anyone remember from earlier in the presentation? What percent? I think some of the people maybe weren't here. Anyone know it? Even guess if you want. What percentage? <laughs> you know what? I think you were right, Jamil and Kevin. It, it should be that high. It's not what the study found, but I don't know if people were being upfront. Anyone else want to get? I'll give a couple more guesses, then whoever's closest will get the point. Yes, 100%. I think that's probably right. 
Kevin gets the point. It was 20% less resilient in the first wave. All right. Hey, who is this? What did I call that individual? Who is that that you should all be to yourself? At any time, you should be who? Does anyone remember the name I gave for this individual? A little bit of a tougher point. I know somebody can do it. I'll give you a clue. The the the, the three letters are C K. Uh, oh. <laughs> B C O. Oh no, C K O. It's right. Chief, Chief Kindness Officer. There you go, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. I actually changed. <laughs> I changed to the Chief Compassion Officer. Hey, they're both great, but you're right. Kevin gets the point. Uh, Chief Compassion Officer, Kindness Officer. Gosh, I want to say that. Okay, to worry less. What was one strategy? Anything. First person to give one strategy to worry less that they, they used or that I, I, I did, that I suggested. One strategy for worrying less. Music, sure. You got it. There's some of the other ones we used, but we did talk about uh, music as well. Does anyone remember what this was called? This type of yoga, Hatha Yoga, it creates what? Anyone remember the title of this one? Helps with adaptability, helps with generating different solutions to a, a problem or an issue. It can create, yell it out if you're not quite sure. Any guesses for this point? Did I'll give a clue. Divergent? It's a certain type of thinking. Divergent? Right. Sorry? Divergent thinking? Was that what Divergent. Said? All right, James, up to two. <laughs> Okay, why is watermelon good to eat? Easy point, easy point. Come on, somebody. Watermelon, good to eat. We have a three-way tie. Come on, guys. Nerves, keep you calm. Sure, also an aphrodisiac, but... Um, Jamil got it first. In terms of relaxing your, your blood, this certainly would play into nerves. So Jamil, you got it. Also an aphrodisiac. Okay, speaking of stress, uh, I just have to move my chat box here to see what... Uh... Oh yes, what's one of the main characteristics that's important with uh, to help with people's stress? Two words. Being positive, it's not the concept I talked about, Kevin. Smile, yes, there's a certain concept that I talked about that is particularly important. Two words. If no one gets it here in a second, we'll give you the point, Kevin, because um, both of those things play into it. And I like how you led with two words. All right, Kevin gets the point. It's emotional intelligence. Both those things are part of it. All right, what was this called? Right, you, you stop a person that's venting and that's angry, so you wanna take notes, show them that you care, give them a second to defuse without explicitly having them know you're doing that. Anyone remember what that's called? Just four questions left and I, I think it's gotta be tight. I think there's a number of people on the big board. Anyone remember what that word is, that, that phrase is? All right, this one will leave hand. This is a pattern interrupt. Eight. Oh, this is a tricky one. What plus what accounts for emotional connection? What two things and, and what percentage do they account for? This is like, you know, the piece to resistance question. And we remember what two things play into uh, emotional connection and what percentage of the emotional connection that accounts for. A clue is that it, it's something right now that's particularly challenging to do. Any guesses out there for the points? Stomped again. Oh, Saeed, you were close. Close, but it was nonverbal 
Your nonverbal and your tone account for 90% of emotional connection. 90% for a human being is how you're conveying yourself non-verbally and your tone. Okay, what's one other way you can make a weak tie that I didn't talk about? Here's an easy point for someone. A strategy they use to make a weak tie, to create more weak ties with people out there. What's another strategy someone who's participating uses as a, as a realtor to try and create more ties with people in the community that I didn't put up as one of mine. Another one that you can think of, parties. There you go, Kevin, you got it. Easy, low hanging fruit. You nailed it though with parties. Oh, just listening to them would 100% would is also a good thing to do, but in terms of weak ties, Kevin gets it with party. Okay, what is the theory? Oh no, did I, ah, uh, this one, I think I put the answer instead of the, <laughs> oh, there, I, I briefly put it as a clue. What is the theory behind the Pod Morrow technique? Quickly, first person who yells it out or says it, one part of the time. So you ended up getting the point after all. But he'd be all right. That's the last question. Jane, uh, who took it? All right. So Kevin in first place, five points. And so we are tied at four. So it was a close race. That's a close race. I think all three of those get, get serious bragging rights. And uh, hopefully some of those things will come in super handy. And uh, hopefully in, in future sessions, we'll actually get some some real prizes on the line, but those things should come in. Any last comments, questions, thoughts? I don't want to keep people longer. I see it's already just past nine o'clock. It's been a ton of fun um, working with everyone today. This has been a ton of fun. Thank you so much. It's always great having you. I was taking notes as we were going. I'm definitely going to look into that long distance friendship lamp. <laughs> see if I can yeah. find mine. So yeah, thank you for all of your suggestions as always. Well, thanks and again some great feedback webinar so good great knowledgeable session thank you uh it's my pleasure it really is i've, I've had a ton of fun uh there is a manual from back in march if people aren't aware of it that has some other strategies in it and as i said coming soon there will be a kind of maybe perhaps weekly i'll be sending out some information to help across different domains of functioning uh likely knowing me the first one will be all about uh sleep or, or if not sleep, then music, one of those two. Uh, <laughs> love two, it. Both things I love. All right, take care, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again. We'll be, uh, we'll see you again soon, I hope. Okay, take care, everyone. All the best. Okay. Bye. Bye.